and welcome back to today's video. And today, guys, I'm going to be doing a review on SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Also, I did want to provide a bit of an update with my speed runs. Right now, guys, with my speed runs, right now, guys, I, I've been working very hard doing these um doing these um speed runs. Unfortunately, guys, this week I will not be doing any speed runs. I'm going to take some time off from the speed running because um because one, it, it can be kind of tiring, and two. This week, where I'm really busy trying to do my truth or square walkthrough. As well, guys, I still have a lot of customs. I'm still trying to make to get everything ready for my World Finals 23 coming up this week. So I'm working on um, very hard on that. And on that. So um, I'm going to take some time off from speedrunning. From speedrunning this week to focus on those two things. Things. But right now, let's hop into the review. Views. So, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is a licensed video game that came out in 2003, made by Heavy Iron Studios, and the show is made by Nickelodeon and created by Steven Hillenberg. Berg. This is a game as a 3D platformer former, that came out for the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox. It even made um, PlayStation 2's greatest hits, Xbox Platinum Family, and something for GameCube. I can't remember what the special thing was for GameCube, Cube, but, um, this game was, um, this, this game has 13 levels, 3 boss levels, a hub world, and 10 main explorable areas, areas, the hub world is Bikini Bottom, the 10 explorable levels are Jellyfish Fields, Downtown Bikini Bottom, the Mer Downtown Bikini Bottom, Goo Lagoon, Rock Bottom, the Mermelair, Sand Mountain, and, and, uh, Sand Mountain, Kelp Forest, Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, and SpongeBob Dream. With the three boss levels being Poseidon, Robo Patrick, and Robo uh, uh, being the Poseidon Industrial Park in the Chum Bucket Lab. The game has has three big main collectibles, being the golden spatulas, which are used to unlock levels, shiny objects, which can be used to buy golden spatulas for Mr. Krabs and buy toll gates, and the socks, socks which are used to be traded back to Patrick for golden spatulas. Ten socks to Patrick, and you'll get golden spatulas. This game has fourteen. Well, I uh, maybe say a, a lot of characters in it. In it, we have SpongeBob, Patrick, Sandy, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Plankton, Karen, Gary, Mermaid Man, Barnacle Boy, The Flying Dutchman, Bubble Buddy, Mrs. Puff, Larry, King Neptune. Um, Old Man Jenkins makes a side appearance. In fact, you can see him on the screen right now. Old Man Jenkins makes an appearance. Um, we also have um, King Neptune in the bo the fish announcer guy and the box office. The dude at the um, box office for the movie theater. So, we, so those are the main characters in this game. You can play as three of them, being SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy. And they all have their own moves. Sandy has a more flying thing with her lasso. You can she las lasso enemies, fly and hover with her lasso, and grab onto swinging hooks with her lasso. Patrick can pick up and throw things. Can pick up and throw things. Has a belly thrust move as almost like a spin attack. Oh, Sandy can also chop and karate kick in the air. Here, Patrick can pick up stuff like such as fruits, tiki's, and robots. Robots and Spongebob has just a bunch of bubble moves, like a bubble spin, a bubble bounce, the bubble bash, the cruise bubble, and the bubble bowl. Cruise bubble and bubble bowl can be unlocked after defeating the Robo Patrick and Robo Sandy boss fights. And can be unlocked after after the boss fights. Also, the game plot turns around where Plankton tries to make a giant machine so he can steal the decorates robots that will... That will unlock, that will um, get him to steal the Krabby Patty formula. But, apparent, but apparently, um, his machine was said to the robots don't obey him. So that means the robots can run amok. The robots can run amok among Bikini Bottom. Bottom. So it's up to SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy to stop them. So, um, yeah, that's the plot, the plot of this game. Game, but right now, um, yeah, that's pretty much the entire plot and everything you practically need to know about the game. It's time for my review. I think this game is a pretty good game. My favorite version would have to be, I know a lot of people love the Xbox version for the graphics, 
My favorite version of the game is the PlayStation 2 button. The PlayStation 2, not button, the PlayStation 2, ver uh, PlayStation 2 version. That one's my favorite version because, um, because it's the one I grew up playing and watching. Watching, because I can remember back when I was little, I used to watch, um, Game Master 468 play, play this game on PlayStation 2. See, which I really didn't, which I, which I loved, which I loved watching. Watching a lot. I even did see on um, Kaiyo Kukira, or however you spell, spell that channel's name. He even posted an all bosses video of Battle for Bikini Bottom. His oldest one. One that's from years ago. Maybe, in fact, maybe from 2013, maybe. Maybe. So I used to watch that. Those were the main two new videos I would watch for this, for this game. I kind of have seen some speed runs on it. On it, and yeah, I think this game, I think the game's really good. Now, the soundtrack on this game is really amazing. Everything fits the level. Like, I could totally, like, go to the beach beach and play the Goo Lagoon theme, and it would fit. The The theme for the Mermelayer fits, like, some sort of, like, superhero lair. Lair, all the boss fight music fits. Like, the Chum Bucket Lab, lab boss fight music fit, fits, um, fits with the level for it being the, like, finale of such an amazing game. Um, also with the boss fights, there's six boss fights in this game. Game being King Jellyfish, which is fightable in Jellyfish Fields, Robo Sandy, which you fight in Poseidon, Prawn, which you fight in the Mermelair, and uh, we have Robo Patrick, fightable in the, in the Industrial Park, the Flying Dutchman, fightable in the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, and we have, um, uh, Robo Spongebob and Robo Plankton fightable in the Chum Bucket Lab as the final boss. But I think all the music soundtracks in this game are fire. I think this is, this game has the best soundtrack. Soundtrack by far. I think that the stereo versions used in Dehydrated may be a bit better, but besides that, this game has the best, best soundtrack to have existed. So, um... Yeah, I think this game is pretty perfect, pretty much. Except for one thing, the voice, it's not even a gameplay thing, it's the voice acting. The voice acting in this game is pretty good for the most part, most of the cast returning to represent all the roles. Except for Mr. Krabs and Mermaid Man, who are both voiced by Joe White. Unfortunately, as Mermaid Man hardly makes any appearances in any Spongebob game for... For, um, he's hardly made any appearances in any Spongebob game to play, um, his role. Role to be an Ernest Borgen has hardly made any appearances voicing as Mermaid Man in hardly any Spongebob games. The only ones he may have, the only ones Ernest Borgen may have voiced for was Super Sponge in Truth or Square. But he unfortunately could not make it for Battle for Bikini Bottom, Lights, Camera, Pants, Battle for Bikini Bottom, Lights, Camera, Pants, or, um, Rehydrated, or Employee of the Month. But Mr. Krabs with Clancy Brown, um, unfortunately, guys, they could not get him to be voice acting in this game, so instead they had Joe White. Mr. Out of all the character models, they all look pretty good. Better than what we saw in Revenge of the Flying Dutchman in the previous game. Except for Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs is, mm, I don't know. Maybe if he had Clancy Brown as wizard, he'd look a bit better, but Mr. Krabs, mm, not the best model I've seen in Mr. Krabs. The only other ones are great. This is the link. This game is pretty good. Also came around the like around the era. It came around. It came out for Halloween in 2003, three, which is which is pretty good. Pretty good release date. This was also during the prime era of SpongeBob. Um, this game also did release on PC and the Game Boy Advance, but we'll, we'll we won't be talking about the Game Boy Advance, but the PC one we'll talk about in a different video. And now, guys, it's time to dive down into my history of... Also, I think all the enemy designs and stuff like that is also really good. Also, I really love the PS2 version. I mean, the Xbox version may look better, but I think the PS2 version just looks the best. Because, you know, the nostalgia I have um, for playing the PS2 version for all the sound effects, all the graphics and looks on PS2 are the best. best. So I'd have to give this game maybe a 10, a 10, a definitely a 10 out of 10. Maybe I'd include the voice acting and the Mr. Krabs model being a problem. Maybe I'd give it a 9.7 out of 10.
But now guys, I'm diving into the history on how I found and my experiences with this game. Okay, so first off, I started discovering the game in probably around, I think, 2013. Through Game Master 468 and Kayo Kukira. Here I ended up discovering the game. Game and watching Game Masters walkthroughs. And watching Game Masters walkthroughs. I think I got the game for either Christmas of 2013 or 2014. And would start playing it. And would start my very first ever playthrough of the game. Well, my first playthrough of the game, well, um, it went okay. We were not able to finish the entire game. I was able to finish, I was able to do some of Bikini Bottom, Bottom, Jellyfish Fields, Downtown, Goo Lagoon, Robo Sandy, Robo Patrick, maybe some Rock Bottom, and then some of the Mermelair. Well, guys, um, so my first ever uh, kind of scary encounter we've had in this game when I was six years old was the Robo Sandy boss fight. I thought it was a very scary boss fight when I first ever fought it, but I think what ended up happening when I did do it, do it was, um, what happened, I think what ended up happening was I ended up, uh, I think I tried to kill myself on purpose. Not in real life, but in the game, I tried to kill myself so I can get out of the boss fight. Fight. Right, and I had my dad do it for me. As we definitely did have some struggles, struggles and scary moments, as my dad had to do most of the work. As we even struggled trying to get apart some of the cross parts of the rooftops and getting through that one area after the cow bungee spatula. In order to get to that platform where you meet the where you meet the hammer robot. Next scary encounter I had would be well, well, where this game where I kind of lose interest in the game for a while uh, would be we I've just gotten the slide we spatula and jellyfish fields to get behind where the forty spatula gate was to see what level that was was because I originally thought Robo Patrick was somewhere in Sand Mountain for some reason I don't know why I thought that but okay. Okay, so we ended up going into that area. I did not know it would be, and that's where it was, Robot Patrick. And that boss was kind of scary. I was, I was kind of scared, and I had my dad fight it, and after he'd beaten that, that boss, I kind of quit on Bell for Bikini Bottom for a little while, for maybe a year or two. So I did not play the game. I did not play the game. I took a break, and I kind of like played other video games throughout my childhood, such as Monster Jam the Video Game, Monster Jam Urban Assault, Plankton's Robotic Revenge and Hero Pants. Hero Pants. I'd play. I'd play those games a lot, a lot then. Trying to beat those and trying to get unlock some of the stuff. Unlock some of the stuff. Well then, um, one day I decided decided I was talking to my dad about the um about one of the bosses in Plankton's Robotic Revenge, the Clem boss fight in Plankton's Robotic Revenge. It's that boss fight in Plankton's Robotic Revenge where. It shoots a bunch of bombs, and I was asking, wondering, which one would be more difficult, that or Robot Patrick? And then I decided to get out the game, and we started to do my second ever playthrough. But this time, we'd get way farther. I still had my dad fight Robot Patrick for me, but I did a lot of the other stuff on my own. Like the rooftops, jellyfish fields. Jellyfish fields, I would do a lot of other stuff, except for the Robot Patrick boss fight. I had my dad do that part, but I would do... A bunch of other stuff, and I'd make it really far. Far. We'd get past Mermelair, Rock Bottom, Sand Mountain. We even got past Kelp Forest and and the Dutchman's Graveyard and SpongeBob Stream. There was a lot of difficulty to um, this playthrough. Although there were no scary moments of Robo Patrick or Robo Sandy in this playthrough, you know, I did have, have some parts where there was a, some rage a little bit with some of the areas in the game, such as the, the Mermelair Ballroom. The Mermelair Ballroom was tough, the Sandmen on Sand Mountain, the Kelp Vine slide, slide, some of the wall jumps in the graveyard, and the following the Bouncing Ball Spatula in Spongebob Stream. We had officially 100%ed, we were about to 100% the game for the first ever time, for my first ever time, right? Well, well, not until, this ended up happening one of my other speedruns, until Mr. Patrick Starr, or apparently he took one of my socks from me in the game and the glitching. And I had all the socks collected, did but but apparently um I had all the socks all the socks were collected. And but the problem was that Patrick somehow took one from me by accident and did a glitch and took one of my socks from me. 
when the game glitched and I was able and I had 99% of the game. And unfortunately, guys, we did not. And, and we got, and got 99%. Well, then I'd immediately start a second playthrough. After going through all the challenges of the first playthrough from previously, I would end up uh, finally 100%ing the game. Although there was some rage with the Mermelaire Ballroom and the and the Prawn boss fight. After that, I would do several more playthroughs of the game. Game. I even did some speedrun races with my dad of 100%ing the game. I remember one time spending one hour on the ballroom. Ballroom. Like I'd be playing Xbox, and my dad would be playing on PS2. I would help out my dad a little bit to find some of the uh, lost socks. Socks that there were in spatulas. But, um... Overall, and I even did try doing another playthrough with my grandma and grandpa. Oh, where my grandma would play Spongebob, grandpa, my grandpa would play Patrick, and... I would play as Sandy throughout the game. But, well, this one turned out as they were a bit older, and this game was definitely not an easy one. One, In fact, with this, I had to help them out a lot of the time. Time and I, um... Until about Goo Lagoon is when I decided I'll I'll just demonstrate to them and like I'd show them and like I had them watch me play play through the rest of the game. The game and explain to them what would be happening. So um yeah. That was something really fun fun um I did with grandma with my grandparents. Um and I just did several other casual playthroughs by myself. I even pretended to be Game Master 468 doing my own walkthrough of the game. And I even splitted all my parts to be exactly like his. Like, I'd collect all the socks whenever he did. I'd probably do, like, my own copy of it almost, but, um... I'd do my own copy of it, um... But I never uploaded it to YouTube. Like, I'd pretend... I, I would pretend like I was him. <clears throat> well, then it would be pretty casual with the game up until June 5th, 2019. As that is when the remaster got announced. Now, originally, I thought Rehydrated already had footage leaked out there, because I saw No Life 4's recreation of the game, and I actually thought, since I was only 10 years old then, I actually thought that was the actual game. I thought that was actually Rehydrated footage. I thought that was actual footage of the game, but then later on, I figured out it was just a mod, not actual game. Not an actual game. So, um... So guys, at the time, Battle for Bikini Bottom would still be my most favorite game ever. Ever. After it took over in late 2016, when I returned back to the game, and got my first 100% playthrough done, done right around the first show in Tampa for Monster Jam, and around January 14, 2017 is when I would finished my first 100% playthrough. And that would become, um, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite game ever I've ever played. Played, well... Well, when Rehydrated got announced, um, I was kind of like, I didn't think the game needed a remake, because I thought the game was already practically perfect. Perfect. I mean, I'm, I mean, it could have just, like, they could have just, like, made it, like, export the game to where it has all the same physics. <clears throat> but just, like, export it with better graphics, um, to the, um, <clears throat> to the, um, what should we call it, to the modern day consoles like PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. And then add new spatulas like what BFB Deluxe is doing, basically. So, um... Um, so I would, um... So I would do the, um... So I would do the, um... I would do it and then Rehydrate got announced and... Well, I didn't think it needed a remake. I would have rather seen a Revenge of the Flying Dutchman remake, because that actually needed a remake because of how bad the controls were, were were in that game. But my opinion would change on that when we saw the trailer drop in around April. In around April of 2000... In around April of 2000 and... Um, April of 2020. Once I saw the trailer and saw all these good remastered things, this would immediately become my favorite game. As soon as it launched, Rehydrated was my favorite game, and and it was no longer the original BFEB. But that wouldn't last for long. It's during the summer, in the middle of one of my playthroughs through, of BFEB, the Rehydrated that I was doing, 
a lightning struck a tree right by my house. House. It didn't destroy my house or catch or have my house caught on fire. Fire, as it was just um, as it was just um. It is, as it would just fry my PS4. My PS4 got fried from the lightning strike that happened at a tree. Tree it would destroy the internet, destroy the AC, but fry my PS4. Four, which means which means all my progress in rehydrate is when that happened. I got into a round after Robot Patrick. Now again, my house wasn't burned down or destroyed, so keep that in mind. So um. But the PS4 is fried, which was kind of heartbreaking because I've lost all my progress and rehydrated, which I could easily get back, which I just didn't look forward to doing the ballroom since that was super slow in this game. Game, um, I wouldn't look forward to doing the ballroom, the ballroom puzzle, or do, do, do the ballroom puzzle, or do, um, do the ballroom puzzle, which was the main thing. I mean, I could easily get all the progress back. I was more upset as I ended up just, up. Uh, Max upgrading all the Monster Gym trucks that we need in Monster Gym Steel Titans 1. 1, so I can do my All-Star Challenge, which was going to be done in October. Well, um, yeah, I lost all my progress when I got all the trucks unlocked and fully upgraded. Yeah, it was hours of work I did, did into that. Did into that. Yeah, guys, there's, there'll be more about this PS4 frying story. Story about the fraud. That will definitely be involved more when I talk about when I... Talk about my all-star challenge that will be coming up later on this year. But we're going to try to stay on Monster Jam in this because this is a Spongebob video, not a Monster Jam video. I'll be making all Monster Jam videos this week, so. Oh, but for, but for, um, but for that, I would end up so I can at least beat Battle for Bikini Bottom once during this entirety of my, um, during, during, uh, my, uh, summer break of 2020. I would end up deciding to get my PS2 out and play... The original game. After defeating Jellyfish Fields and going through the game, game, I kind of realized I found this more nostalgia and a bit better. Better. That was nostalgia, and I found the graphics I found with this. I found that these graphics, no matter if you remaster it or remaster this game with so much better graphics, the graphics, all the textures, the sound effects, Effects. Every little detail about this game will always be better than anything you can ever recreate. You can recreate something so much like with better graphics, and it will never, ever come close to beating the original game's looks. Looks, I don't care what you do. Except for maybe fixing that Mr. Krabs model and getting his right voice. And Mermaid Man's right voice. We won't ever get a Mermaid Man's right voice in the game, because, you know... Yeah, but I'll talk about that later. Later, but um, it, but um, nothing can beat that. And then I'd continue on on playing the game. Game. I'd even do another playthrough during the winter or time of two winter break of 2020 slash 2021. And then later on throughout 2021, I discovered something, which was the art of speed running. Speed running the game. Speedrunning the game as I began grown in interest after seeing one shift's tutorial and watching fully through shift's documentaries on how speedrunning revived Bell for Bikini Bottom. And so I started trying to do some speedruns on my Xbox. I would even try to do the um, any percent category on my first ever speedrun. I'd get it in 4 hours and 45 minutes for the any percent. And more with my speedrun speedruns throughout the later T of 2021. I remember one day I was sick from school and and I couldn't go to school, so Friday and Saturday I booted up the Xbox and I started speedrunning this game. And um, I would get some better times. I'd save like an hour on it. Then I would do another speedrun during Thanksgiving break, continuing to bring my time down. And then on winter break, break I ended up again doing another run, running down in two hours and fifty-seven minutes. My first sub three-hour time. And then also during the winter break, something else happened with the, this game. Game that game that has never been done before. I'd go for another casual playthrough, but this time, time I'd do it, but I would upload it to YouTube. As this is what you're seeing right here. As we end up uploading my casual playthrough to YouTube, to which would be pretty amazing. Now this now, now this walkthrough I think is probably one of my best viewed walkthroughs of SpongeBob games I've done so far. And I've only done 
I've only started Hero Pants. I'm bound to finish Truth or Square. Square, but Battle for Bikini Bottom is my first ever walkthrough on this game. I did 100% completely finished. 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 And it's the only one to do so. But that's going to change soon as we're starting Truth... I'm starting Truth or Square later on today. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm finishing Truth or Square right later on today, getting the rest of the happiness items and happiness objects, sleeping Patrick's and... Crabby Pie Deluxe packages. Packages. So, um, yeah, that's this and that, that record's not gonna stay for long, but. But this. But this game. But this game is so far the only one I've had 100%, and it has uploaded to YouTube. Too. Too. But after the walkthrough it end, it has the most views. Movie Game PC may have gotten more views on its walkthrough because that has got hundreds of views. But Battle for Bikini Bottom may have more because because of the amount of videos. As truth as Movie Game PC was only five videos. Meanwhile, this walkthrough was 27. This is also my longest SpongeBob walkthrough I'll probably ever do on YouTube. Except if I were to do maybe a rehydrated walkthrough, which is going to be 28 parts. So that's that record is also going to be broken because I'm going to be doing the multiplayer mode mode afterwards as part 28. So, I would end up, so, um, yeah, and then later on for the summer 2022, we'd start doing more speedruns, but start doing 100% and all-level spatula speedruns, and which would go pretty good. Right now, the current PBs in those categories is 3 hours, 44 minutes for 100%, all-level spatula is around 2 hours and 30 minutes and something, and then 2 hours and 15 minutes for any percent. And, you guys, that'd practically be the story and where we're all caught up. And today we would do the review of the game. That's practically that was practically it for the entirety of of that um of my history of Battle for Bikini Bottom and my review. The only thing I really believe really is I would have changed if I was in development of this game is get the proper Mermaid Man and Mr. Krabs voice actors and make Mr. Krabs' model of it better. But unfortunately, guys, no matter how hard we try, we'll never ever get a right Mermaid Man voice actor, since unfortunately he passed away in 2012. 12, so, oh, um, so, so, um, so yeah, that would be, that's a bit sad, so we'll never ever get his voice acting, and unless we somehow find some sort of app or something where he can put some celebrity's voice or some cartoon character voice, voice like you put it into a thing and then you talk and whatever you say that you it, it'll sound but with the cartoon character's voice unless something like that happens like something like uber duck or something like that and mermaid man gets added or something like that i mean i've seen things where you can sing songs and then i'll have the voice of like a cartoon character or some celebrity he's saying that's what it would sound like like but um if we can only get something like that but we can you can talk into it and then then the lines for the character would be repeated, and Mermaid Man was in it, then maybe it'd be possible for modding to do that. And do that. Or you, or for Mr. Krabs' situation, it is possible, but you could either pay him to do the voice acting, which that would be probably one expensive mod to pay Mr. Krabs to do that. You'd have to, to pay, pay Clancy Brown to do all the voicing for BFBB and then make it a mod. That'd be one expensive mod. You'd probably have to make it something you'd have to pay. You have to make people pay for in order to get it, cause, cause, or else you can You probably couldn't make the mod for free. Like anybody can get it for free. You probably have to make it expensive so that way you can pay Clancy Brown to do it. That's so that way he gets some profit out of it, out of it, out of it. Or I can use something like Uber Duck and try to see if we can get Mr. Krabs to talk in that, like what I was suggesting Mermaid Man earlier. For um, for for Mr. Krabs, but more but I mean, if you're gonna pay him to do a voice, that'd be an expensive mod. You'd have to be somebody like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, or Mr. Beast to do that. So yeah, guys, that'd probably gonna be the story of everything of how I ended of uh, my review for Bell for Bikini Bottom. Overall, good game. I'd give it anywhere from somewhere from a 9.7 to a 10 out of 10. 10. So, yeah, guys, that'll practically be the end of the video. There are 40 going to smash, but we could go find a boss right now. No, 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 no